We have a light. We have a camera. Let's do some action. I just kind of came up with that on the fly. <laughs> it didn't quite work. Lights, camera, action. We are back in business over here, y'all. We were without power here at our house after Hurricane Helene for eight and a half days. Um, I've got a little bit of a headache right now. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. We've had power now for less than 24 hours. Just trying to clean up the house, get to the grocery store. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then we're having some friends over tonight that still don't have power. Um, they are coming over to watch the Clemson game and to have dinner, hopefully bring their laundry with them, bring their shower stuff with them, take a hot shower here. Just trying to open up our home to people that we know that still don't have power because it's still a thing here in South Carolina. I know Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina. I know so many places were affected by Hurricane Helene and I don't think any of us were really fully prepared for it. So it's been, it's been a long time little over a week but I'm so glad that we have power back again and that we are able to start to move forward it's been a tough season we lost Gracie Lou and then like a week and a half later Hurricane Helene came through and then we had a week of no power over a week of no power so it's just been a very frustrating and exhausting few weeks three weeks and I'm just ready to move forward. So, hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the making. Here's another fly. Our house is the house of flies. Where did it go? In the time that I turn around to get the fly flap, do you call it a fly swatter or a fly flap? I called it a fly swatter until I met Steven and he calls it a fly flap. Ah, oh, stay still. It's gone. So this is gonna be kind of vlog style. We are just trying to get back into the swing of things. It's so funny, this morning when I went to get dressed, <laughs> I walked into our closet in the dark and was looking, trying to find clothes, and I thought, oh, you have power now. You can flip on the switch and you can see things. It's, it's a concept I'm not used to anymore. <laughs> but um, as far as everything went, um, we were very fortunate here in our area that we didn't have the flooding and the severe damage that a lot of other places had. Our house in particular, we did not have anything fall on our house. We had no trees. We don't have many trees in our yard anyway, but there's lots of trees all around us that don't belong to us, but nothing fell onto our property. So we were very, very blessed, but it came whipping through here on Friday, September 27th. It, it was bad in the middle of the night. Our power blinked in the middle of the night, but it got really bad around 6.30 that morning. And the really bad part lasted until about nine or so. We lost power around 7.30. Um, and you know, when you're in your own home and you're just looking outside, it was very scary, but we didn't know the extent of the damage in our area until several hours after the wind stopped whipping. It wasn't pouring rain anymore we got in the truck and we headed out just to kind of see. And it was, it looked like almost like an apocalypse. The thousands and thousands and thousands of trees and power lines down were astonishing. Um, we couldn't go down like pretty much any road. There was one way out. You were having to, um, like at the end of our road, one of the traffic lights was completely down except for, it's on a four lane road except for one lane of traffic could get through. So we were having to wait for someone to pass so you could go under it. Um, most roads you would start going and then you'd have to stop and do a three point turn and turn around because there would either be a tree or a power line or something down in the road. It was eye opening. We knew it was bad. We didn't know it was that bad. Um, so that's why it took so long for power to come on and why some people still don't have power right now. You're seeing this on Tuesday. And I hope by then pretty much everyone in our area has power. Um, across the Carolinas, it was, you know, just in our area, the Western Carolinas, 1.2 million with this particular um, electric company. There's several, 1.2 million customers without power. As of last night, I think it was down to 
two or three hundred thousand. Finally, they've moved, you know, in that eight and a half days, they've gotten that much power back on. We had a generator, um, we had a battery generator to start with, that's all we had. Because we've lived in this house for eight years and never had power go out, ever. Um, so we weren't prepared. We had a battery generator, which did keep our freezer going for the first weekend. And then we were able to get a gas power generator. We borrowed it from some friends whose power had already come back on and we were able to keep the freezer going. We could not keep the fridge going, so we lost everything from the fridge other than a few things in the freezer drawer down there that we could put in the other freezer. So we um, needed to restock because the fridge was completely empty. I went to the, a grocery store this morning, got most of everything I needed, stopped by a Dollar General, got the last thing of Duke's mayonnaise, because it has to be Duke's. The only mayonnaise that Publix had was like, plant-based mayo was the only thing they had left. All the good stuff was gone uh, because everybody's having to restock their fridge. And then I went by Food Lion, which as of last night did not have any produce, meat, dairy, frozen, none of that. Uh, today they were already starting to restock it and I went this morning and I was able to get the last couple of things that I needed. So it took three stores, but we got everything that we need for now. We're by no means completely restocked but I was able to also order a lot of um, our pantry pantry goods, our things that once you open it has to be refrigerated. A lot of that I got from Thrive Market. That box is coming in today. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Why? <laughs> what, where did you go? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Very chatty intro to this video, but it's just where we're at. Our kitchen looks so much better. Last night, as soon as the power came on, it was quite comical. Um, Steven and Cole were inside and I was on the porch and I heard them screaming and I couldn't figure out what they were saying because the windows were open, obviously, because um, we didn't have any power. That was the only way to get airflow. And I heard them screaming and I turned around and I looked and I saw light in the house. And it took a second for my brain to compute. I was like, why is it light in our house? It's always dark. Power had come on. So we were running around just cleaning because we haven't been able to in over a week. Um, but we finally feel like things are kind of coming back to normal. And we're going to be making one of our favorite dinners tonight um, for our friends. We are making killer white chicken chili. We'll get started on that a little bit later. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time because... I've got navy beans that I did not soak overnight because I had to go get these navy beans today. So there is a quick soak method that you can do in the Instant Pot. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So we'll try that together. I've still gotta put up some groceries, get this house ready, finish our laundry so that when our friends come over, if they have laundry, they can do theirs. It's the same friends that came and watched a Clemson game with us at the beginning of the season. So I'm excited to have them over tonight and to feed them a nice warm meal. You know, that's one of the things that we were so blessed with because my entire family was out without power. My mother-in-law, stepmother-in-law, my mom and dad, my sister and her husband, all of us did not have power because we all live within about 30 minutes of each other. Um, but I had several friends who got power earlier in the week and let me come over and do laundry and take a shower, a hot shower, um, and then last night, before our power came back on, my friend Jamie sent us a Mississippi pot roast home. Like I went and picked it up, she cooked it for us, went and picked it up and we brought it here and we ate a home cooked meal for the first time in over a week. And it was so glorious. That was um, a couple of hours before the power came back on. So we are so stoked to be back in the kitchen and be able to do life again as normal. Um, with that being said, there are many, many, many people who lost everything in this hurricane. We have donated as a family um, to a particular re disaster relief organization that's local to us that is going straight to Hurricane Helene victims. Um, I will leave some information below if you're interested in helping, if you can help. We would be very grateful if you would just go check that out and 
any donation would help, but they are, there's towns that we've grown up going to that are less than an hour from here that are completely wiped away, gone. There's nothing left. The devastation is unreal, and I don't know how much of that is being told in the media. I don't think it's a lot. I think it's through social media, but on the news, I don't think they're covering it. Um, I could be wrong, but it's really bad. And if you can, if you're in a position where you can give anything, I know it would be greatly appreciated. I'm long-winded today, y'all. <laughs> I've missed this. I've missed filming. I've missed all of it, just normal life. So now that it's back, even though I have a little bit of a headache, we got, we got to move forward. We got to get some stuff done. So y'all are going to hang out in the kitchen with me today while I make some things. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be back. I missed you. Thank you again for all of the love that you guys have given us through the passing of Gracie Lou. Steven said something when we were sitting in the dark. He said, you know, as hard as it was to lose Gracie Lou, I'm so thankful that the Lord had all of that happen before the hurricane came through because she was very high needs in the end. Um, she was very needy because it was, it was her time. And I don't know that we would have been able to take as good of care of her in the predicament that we were in. So the Lord always provides and his timing is perfect. So we are very thankful. Um, and it definitely was a distraction over the last week and a day to not just constantly be sitting around thinking about my girl. Um, doesn't mean I haven't thought about her because I have lots of times. But we've just been so preoccupied with just doing life without power that it was a good distraction. We've received lots of cards and gifts. Y'all are, so, are so sweet. I don't even think I've shown you that Gracie Lou is back home. Hold on. My Gracie Lou is back home. Um... We chose to have her privately cremated. It was just a choice that we made. I know some people don't understand that, and quite honestly, I don't think I quite understood when people did that until now. Uh, it just felt right to have her back home. Um, we had talked about burying her in the backyard, but I'm just gonna move forward. She's here. <clears throat> But we have gotten so, so much love, so many cards and letters and comments and emails and all the things. So, thank you. It has meant the world. I love that y'all loved her. She was the most loved kitty in the world and not just by us, by you too. And we appreciate that. Okay. No more tears. <laughs> Let's move on with the day. Let's move on. It is, I don't know what time. Hold. 4.20. They're gonna be here around 6.30. We have not, like I mentioned earlier, pre-soaked our dried beans. I have navy beans, I have a pound. Today I'm making the full recipe since we have guests coming over. Um, but usually I would overnight soak these, but I didn't have them in my possession to do that. So we're gonna do the Instant Pot soaking. Let's try it. To do this method, we're just gonna dump all of our beans in. Like I mentioned, it's a pound. I do wanna kinda of go through it and just make sure I don't see any rocks or anything. I think we're good. Now you're gonna add eight cups of water in. We're gonna bring it up to a bowl on the saute function. So I'm just gonna turn that on and let all of this come up to a bowl. This has finally come up to a bowl. It took what, maybe 15 minutes, Steven? Ish? Yeah, something like that. All right, so I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna hit cancel. We're gonna put the lid on. So now we're just going to pressure cook this on high pressure for two minutes and then we will release all of the steam. We need diced celery and diced onion. And you know what? I was just gonna chop it all up, but I don't feel like it. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy chopper out. I've got four stalks of celery. Last one. 
I thought that was the last one, and Stephen found this one for me. <laughs> it was hiding. It was hiding from me. Now, let's dice an onion. Ta-da! How you feeling about that? I, I mean, I know this is going to be good. You've had this I before. I already know that. But it's going to take a whole block of this. I'm not afraid because I know this is one of my favorite all-time chilies. It is. So I'm not scared. I got this. He ain't scared, y'all. Not, not this time. He ain't scared. So our timer just went off, and we are going to kind of slow release as little as possible. It may start to foam up, and if that's the case, we can just kind of stop. So. Very fun and precise. Our little valve just dropped. There we go. Now we just need to drain and rinse these under cold water. Oh yeah, they feel good. I didn't know how that method was gonna work, but I think it's perfect. Well, let's hit the saute function again. And once it says hot, we will start our next step. This has come up to temperature. We're gonna add in four tablespoons of butter and let that melt. Let's add in our veggies. And we're gonna saute these for three or four minutes, not long. And let's also add in some spices. So I measured out all of these spices before. We've got white pepper, we've got garlic powder, smoked paprika, cumin, and salt. And I'm gonna tell you, the recipe tells you to add the salt later. I messed up and added it into this concoction that I just poured in there. But it all ends up in there in the end, so I'm thinking it probably doesn't matter that much. But if you wanna wait, you can just do the salt later like they tell you to. Ooh, that smells smoky and good. It's been about five minutes. I'm gonna add in five cups of water. And then we're gonna scrape the bottom just so that we don't get that burn notice. I'm gonna go through and just make sure we're good. I think we're good. We're gonna add in two tablespoons of this Better Than Bouillon uh, roasted chicken base. So there's one tablespoon and two. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my Instant Pot so it was on saute. I'm gonna hit cancel. Stir this around really good. Now we're gonna add in our pound of navy beans that have been soaked either overnight or that quick soak method like we did. We're also gonna add in two pounds of chicken. It says you could do chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and chicken breasts, like a combination of the two. We're just going with two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I did trim these up already. And at this point, if you did not already add your salt, add it in now. I'm gonna take my little Instant Pot clip off. Take this out and we are going to put the lid on. Okay, we're gonna set it to sealing. Stay. You're gonna hit the soup button for 12 minutes, and we're gonna let that come up to temperature. If you're having chili in this house, you also have to have cornbread. Cornbread. So we're gonna make grandma's cornbread. If you've not been here before, this will be new to you. If you've been here before, I've made this a thousand times. Over here, we have this on the wall. And if you'll look, there's pictures, different stages of cornbread being made. That, this was a gift from Stephen's stepmom. But on the back of this one here, this one here, and this one are the directions on how to make grandmom's cornbread. First things first, let's preheat our oven to 425. We're almost out of self-rising cornmeal. That's what we use. I've got a little trick for you to use. On the back, I have the expiration date in a little label. And anytime I refill it, I just change the expiration date and put the new expiration date on there. So we're gonna use the rest of this cornmeal and then I will use whatever I need of this one and I'll refill this with the new expiration date. So who has been here long enough to remember the skillet biscuit when I was trying to make cornbread, but I used flour <laughs> instead of cornmeal? It was a big old biscuit. That was a good biscuit too. It was pretty good. I liked it. It was quite comical. All right, I need two and a half cups of self-rising uh, cornmeal, not flour. One cup. Okay, there's two. A half, as Stephen says. Two and a half. Two and a half. One and two halves? No. One and three halves. Oh, okay. Got you. <laughs> One and three halves. Here, let me pour this in here. <laughs> 
Don't forget to write that date on there. I'll write the date on there, don't you worry. <laughs> now I need a couple of tablespoons of Crisco to grease our skillet, cast iron skillet. So I always just use a little baggie like this to kind of spread it around. It's less mess this way. You want to coat your cast iron skillet really well with your Crisco up on the sides too. We need half a cup of Crisco. Add that in here with our cornmeal. And then we're gonna add in two eggs as well. And we're gonna take a pastry cutter and just start to mix all of this together in like a downward circular motion. And this is just gonna look like coarse crumbs when it's ready. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Now we just need to grab our buttermilk. Two cups of buttermilk. I always use full fat buttermilk. I don't know if you can use like the, is there fat free buttermilk? I feel like there is. I don't know how. I don't know. But that should be against the law. It should be. Um, but I, I would not recommend using that. Use the fully leaded. <laughs> grab a fork and you're just gonna mix this together. It's still gonna be lumpy. That's okay. All right, we're good. Then let's just pour it in here. And then this is gonna go in the oven at 425 for 25 to 35 minutes. 33 minutes is usually the sweet spot for me. I like to be good and golden brown on top. Once your Instant Pot is done, you're gonna let it naturally release for about 10 minutes and then you let the remainder, remainder of the pressure come out. And now we're gonna take all of our chicken out and we're gonna shred it. So now that we've got all of this shredded really finely, thank you, Steven. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna add it back to our soup or to our chili. Why don't you tell them what happened? What happened? So in an ideal world, this would have worked like it was supposed to, but you know what? You just gotta roll with punches. That's right. Our ceiling ring, I've never had this happen. It wasn't completely closed or like our ceiling ring was not completely sealed, I guess, in the lid. So the steam was escaping. So it has cooked all the chicken. The chicken is done, but I feel like my beans aren't quite done yet. So now that I've figured out my problem, I'm going to bring this up to pressure for just a couple of minutes just to make my beans a little bit softer. So this is what I was talking about. When I finally figured out, cause the steam was escaping all around the Instant Pot and it, the valve wasn't closing. I was like, what is going on? Googled it, good old Google. And it basically said, it's not sealed right. So we turned it off. And as soon as I opened this, the ceiling ring kind of like fell out. I said, that's what it was. Now it's in there good. Or at least I think it is. Thought it was before, but. Oh, you see that? I did see that. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna bring this up to pressure for just a couple of minutes just to make our beans a little bit softer. So you see that steam coming out of that tiny little hole? That's what it's supposed to look like, just in case you aren't familiar. We had steam coming out all around. We couldn't quite figure out what was going on. Steven said, has that ever happened before? I said, nope. <laughs> a proper malfunction. We are malfunction junction over here. We have been for several weeks. Okay, our cornbread is done. We had to shake it really good in the pan. You want to shake it till it comes loose in the pan. That way when you flip it over, it won't stick to the pan at all. And it has this gorgeous dark brown crust on it. Our timer went off. Like I mentioned, if you were doing this the first time around and it, you were waiting to take your chicken out and shred it, you're going to let it slow release for about, or naturally release for about 10 minutes. We're in a hurry. So don't do as I do, do as I say. I'm going to release the pressure. Butamus. Let's start adding in the rest of our ingredients. We have a whole block of cream cheese. I just kind of cubed it so it'll be easier, but it's gonna melt down pretty quickly. I wanted to add it in first before I add in everything else. So I'm just gonna mix this around and put my clip back on there. There. Mix this around so that that cream cheese will melt quickly while it's good and hot. We've got a couple of cans of corn that I've already drained. Let's add that in. 
a can of Rotel, this entire jar of Salsa Verde. This is a 16 ounce jar. There we go. Let's mix all of this together. Now we have the option at the end to do a cornstarch slurry if we want to, but I don't know that we need to. It's pretty good and creamy and thick already. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't think we need the cornstarch slurry. It's up to you because some people really like their chili super thick. Right. I think ours is going to be fine. Okay. Oh my gosh, look at that. Mm -hmm. It is the best. Even though I'm not doing the cornstarch slurry, I am going to turn mine back over to saute just to keep it really good and warm and to make sure everything is nice and good. But if you are doing a cornstarch slurry, that's when you definitely need to turn it over to saute so that that cornstarch can thicken everything up. Where's my cornbread kitty when I, I need one? <laughs> I miss my girl. I ate that for Gracie. <laughs> now, ain't that pretty? Yes. Okay, we'll set that to the side. Let's get our soup. Oh my goodness, y'all. And I already tried our beans. They are fine. Good and soft, but not too soft. They're perfect. Everything worked out. So even when you make mistakes like I do, constantly it'll be okay oh yeah let's put some tortilla strips on top we got our little uh bowl koozie under here that one of you made for us and sent to us so that we don't burn our hand while we're trying to get our soup thank you for making this thank you for bearing with me when i made a boo-boo it's okay it's we, okay we it worked out it. we figured it out Tink. Tink. Why is that the best white chicken chili ever? I mean, because of what you put in that. Cream cheese. Well, that salsa verde. Oh gosh, it's so good, y'all. Just delicious. Yes, creamy, a little bit of a spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just incredible flavor from that salsa, salsa verde. I got dunked in there. <laughs> Mm. I personally don't think you have to do the cornstarch slurry. It's up to you. But this is pretty thick and creamy. That cream cheese really does thicken it up really nicely. Damn. Oh, man, that is delicious comfort food. It's perfect for watching Clemson tonight. Yeah. Hopefully beat. A little football, mm -hmm. chili and football. Mm -hmm. mm. Our friends will be here. They're supposed to be here in two minutes. So we're going we're gonna to peace y'all out. We've got to mm. entertain our friends, let them come in and cool off and enjoy the air conditioner because mm -hmm. they still don't have power. At least they haven't told us that they have power yet. Right. But I don't. I don't think they do. So they're gonna come over, take showers, just take a load off and yeah. watch. Hopefully, the Tigers beat FSU. Y'all are seeing this in the future, so you'll know if, if we did or not. <laughs> don't tell us. They better. They better what? They better not. <laughs> They better not what? They better not go in there too, <laughs> too high and mighty. Uh-huh. Too cocky and think. Because FSU can beat you. I don't care what the daggum. They can. I don't and care what the... FSU's quarterback <laughs> is our former quarterback, but he's injured. I don't think yeah. he's playing. So. I don't care what their record is. No. Still you beat can get beat any That's why I love Saturday. college football. You just never you know just what's going to happen. We always hope that the Tigers are going to win, but, you know. Thank you all for hanging out with us in the kitchen while we made this meal for our friends and for us. It's our first meal that we've made yeah. now that we have power. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful to have power, y'all. Things you take for granted. You just down there and talk. I'm going to eat this. All right, y'all. We'll right. see y'all next time. Bye.